Week one is here, y'all. The Pittsburgh Steelers get ready to take on the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday, 1 o'clock. We're going to start the week of breakdowns looking at one of the biggest questions I think goes into this matchup, and it's whether or not the Steelers' run defense is ready to handle Joe Mixon and that new revamped offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm Chris Carter of the Lockdown Steelers Podcast. We'll break that down and a lot more. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the, their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N locked on, and that's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. All right, now that that's out of the way, I know this is it's Bengals week. There's a lot of revenge in a lot of Steelers fans' mind, and I get it. The Bengals swept you last year. It's 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 rough. Let's talk about some, one of the more important matchups. I know everyone's going to talk about Joe Burrow. Everyone's going to talk about Jamar Chase, and we'll get to them in the show a bit, and we'll get to them definitely this week at, at some point in time. We're going to have our crossover Thursdays. We talk to the Locked On Bengals guys about how those those guys are doing. But one aspect that can't be overlooked in this matchup is the run defense versus the Bengals run game. And Joe, everyone knows Joe Mixon, talented running back, big, fast, is able to make guys miss in the hole, can take advantage of, of, of the opportunities that are there. But some people might be thinking, well, the Bengals offensive line, that wasn't a strong point for them this year. Well, Pro Football Focus is ranking them as a potential top 10 offensive line going into this season with the with the additions, with the additions they've made. Now, They've been they've been able to make some additions. One Jonah Williams being healthy is a big is a big part of this. But they've been able to go get Lyle Collins at at, at right tackle. That's gonna be a um that's that's gonna be a big addition. This group has been added with veterans. They took their time. Um the uh the the, the Bengals did uh in in trying to put this group together. And it's funny because you know just about a year the last, over the last two years, the first two years of Joe Burrow's career, uh, you know a lot of Bengals fans were like, hey, wait a minute, what about this offensive line? The Bengals went and got their playmakers, and then they went and got their offensive line. But all reports right now to training camp, and again, this stuff is varied. I you know I, I don't put too much stuff into training camp hype. Just like, just like I tell you guys, hey, like you know as we went through Steelers training camp. Take everything with a grain of salt. Take it. Don't take everything to be the gospel. Just be like, hey, this was a good day, and this was a good day, and a person stacks good days. Maybe it means there could be good things coming during the season. But as we saw with guys like Dan Moore, who stacked some good days, didn't look too great in the preseason. The Bengals have a few guys who have who stacked a lot of good days in the preseason, uh, namely Cordell Volson at left guard, uh, Alex Kappa at right guard, and Lyle, Lyle Collins at right tackle. They have Ted Karras uh, at center. Uh, a former Patriot uh, who who came there for a six round pick Patriot and Jonah Williams is their big pick that they're hoping to work out. Now, Jackson Carmen, the Clemson guy hasn't worked out so far, but this is an offensive line now that has veterans and young guys that are mixed in well. And the Bengals, you know, their rebuild was happening for years before what the Steelers have gone into to try and rebuild their offense. They're a couple steps ahead. I'd say more than a couple steps ahead. You know, Joe, Bur Joe Burrows now now has the chance to show that he's a seasoned veteran and not just a, a second year quarterback who got hot. Jamar Chase is coming off an explosive rookie season. You still got T. Higgins. You still got Tyler Boyd. That may be the best receiving you know trio of of the NFL. Though I do I do agree with Steelers fans who say, hey, this Steeler this this receiving trio might be able to you know be in that conversation. But we got to see what those guys, what these guys do. The Bengals have those guys. But again, it comes down to the run game. Because last year, if you look back at, at, at the two games when the Steelers were swept by the Bengals, the first game the Steelers were in until late in the game when uh, when, the, when the Bengals, well, let's say like third quarter, when the Bengals started to take over and the Steelers offense just never responded. Um, you, had, you had the 34-yard pass to Jamar Chase at the end of the first half, which, okay, 
they were down 14 7 that was fine but then they broke away with uh you know another jamar chase pass and the the steelers offense never got to respond but what helped balance that game a little bit better for them was that they had joe mixon running 18 carries for 90 yards nothing crazy but there were times when the Steelers needed short stops and they couldn't get them in that game. And that was early on in the season, right around the time when they had just lost Tyson Alulu. They were still adjusting. I think TJ Watt was playing hurt or something along those lines. Um, he, may, he might have even gotten hurt in this game. But we, this was when I think people were starting to be like, whoa, the run defense, something's not something's not right there. Thing, things aren't great yet about, about that group. Um, but then you really saw in the second game when that became an issue. And that's when the game, the Steelers never had a chance. They, the Steelers were at least, they had a shot in the first game. They had no shot in the second game. It was, they lost 41-10, you know, and Joe Burrow had a good day, 20, 20, 20 of 24 for 190 yards, a touchdown and a pick. But it was Joe Mixon who crushed the Steelers that game, 28 carries, 165 yards and two touchdowns. The Steelers cannot afford to let that happen. If Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase beat them, it's like, hey, you know what? A first overall pick, a, a top five pick. And you know you're you're get you're you're getting your secondary to get okay, but you cannot let the Bengals run on you because if the Bengals run on you, it will make it so much easier for for Jamar Chase and and Joe Burrow. And to me, this is why I was stressing week in and week out during the training camp, during the preseason, the Steelers' run defense got to come together. That's why you saw me do all those linebacker episodes. That's why you saw me kept talking about defensive line depth because. This is going to be a heck of a test to come out in, into the season because I, I truly think the Bengals, they're going to be a team that's going to try, that's going to have a balanced offense, but they're not going to be afraid to plow you over with that new offensive line they got. They're going to want to show it off. They're going to want to run the, you know, run the ball to Joe Mixon. They're going to want to use these guys to kind of rub it in the Steelers' face and 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 dominate the game and not put Joe Burrow in, 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 in too many positions where he has to drop back and take and take dangerous passes or dangerous hits against the Steelers' pass rush. Why not attack the Steelers' weakness, which was the worst rushing defense in the NFL last year, make them prove that they've gotten better. I truly expect that to be a major facet of this game. What's going to be, I think, the big the, the Steelers' best deterrent against this is going to be one Miles Jack directing the linebackers' cores. You know, being a being a downhill a guy who's going to attack better. We'll see if Devin Bush the progress that he that we saw in that last preseason game does that carry over to the regular season or do you know we kind of see him take a step back and still him kind of middling around and figuring things out. Does Larry Ogunjobi? Uh, you know, figure things out and, you know, and, and work well next to Cam Hayward. Is, is Alex Highsmith healthy? Is TJ Watt fully healthy? Now, TJ Watt says he's fully healthy and Alex Highsmith says he was going to be ready for week one. So there's a lot of optimism that they will be that. But all these things are going to be key because there are some serious matchups. I think that the Steelers have to look at up front that are going to decide this game. We'll talk about more, more about those matchups in just a minute here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. But first, we got to talk to you guys about prize picks. Now I mentioned prize picks earlier because they're one of our great sponsors, but it's a fun new daily fantasy game that everyone needs to start playing right now. If you're big into fantasy sport, this is a way to get your daily fix by selecting an indiv- individual player projections and making simple decisions, whether they'll get more or less of a set of number of yards, touchdowns, or other key fantasy stats. It's easy. Simply pick two to five players. You can, you, you it, it, guys that you think you have a beat on for their day in fantasy, whether what, and you choose whether they'll get more or less than the certain stat that that prize picks has set up. For example, if a player has t- has two touchdowns, you're you're saying or two and a half touchdowns, you're saying more, you're saying over or under or you know, not over, excuse me, more or less uh, than than those situate than that set number of, uh, of of stats. That's how you play prize picks. It's that simple. It's not playing against anybody else. It's playing against the numbers set by prize picks, and you can win up to 10 times your money on any single entry you're not competing against others it's just the, it's just the picks themselves prize picks also does nba major league baseball nhl college sports and so much more on top of the nfl so download the prize picks acts app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up for and play daily fantasy sports first time users can receive 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on and remember that's that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n Locked on, all one word. Don't forget to enter that promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100 when you visit prizepicks.com. Back here in the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get back to talking about this, this, uh, this run defense situation and what they're up against because 
a lot of things that I'm hearing for, and I spent the weekend um, after the backyard brawl, by the way, you know, Pitt beat West Virginia. How about that? Uh, best believe I'm bringing Wes on this weekend. Best believe I'm talking lots of stuff. Uh, but uh, anyways, I, I look at this Bengals offensive line, and last year you saw some holes, but Lyle Collins, he's a good run block and right tackle. He's going to set a good tone for you. You got Alex Kappa that you brought in. You got Ted Karras you brought in. You got Corden Volson. This was them doing what I expect the Steelers to do in the next year or two. A lot of people are saying, why haven't the Steelers invested in the offensive line? Well, the, the Steelers, you know, had to had to focus on some other aspects too. They, they they saw their quarterback that they think could be their future in Kenny Pickett. They went and got him. They saw the wide receiver that they think could be the next wide receiver, one of the team at George Pickens. They went and got him. And they've taken some stats at offensive linemen in the middle rounds. You're not always going to hit on those. But look at the Bengals. If you want an example of how sometimes how it works out and not that the Bengals are the shining example, but they're just a recent example of a team that went to a Super Bowl. They didn't have a great offensive line last year. They had a a quarterback who was comfortable in the system. They had a playmaking wide receiver. They had a talented running back. And they had skilled position players that they were confident in. Oh, wait, did I just say what the Steelers think they have? And Najee Harris and Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool and George Pickens and Calvin Austin and then Pat Frymuth. And then we 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 we're, we know they're still excited about Zach Gentry. Oh my God, I think I did. I'm not saying the Steelers are the Bengals, but their weakness right now in the offense and their strengths and weaknesses are very similar to that of what the Bengals were last year. Now, the one thing the Bengals have is that Joe Burrow is an established quarterback on on a team that he's getting used to. Granted, last year he was coming off an ACL tear, and there was there were questions going into that year. But certainly, you take Joe Burrow above a Mitch Trubisky. Now, there's people like LaShawn McCoy, granted, a, a former Pitt Panther himself. I'm a Pitt grad myself, so I, I have I, I admit I have my biases. I cover I also cover the Pitt Panthers. But Kenny, there's some people that have said that Kenny Pickett could be a Joe Burrow like player. And I see the leadership, I see the accuracy, I see the, 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 the field vision, I see a lot of those similarities in, in Kenny Pickett that I've seen that I've seen in Joe Burrow. But one thing that the that the, that the Steelers that the Bengals are going to bring to this game that the Steelers I think are going to be able to try to bring in the next year or two, now that they've been able to focus on hey let's let's make sure that the defense is locked up T.J. Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick let's make sure we get a linebacker to work over Devin Bush in case he he doesn't come back let's make sure we get a defensive lineman next to Stephon to it let's make sure we're keeping our our young offensive playmakers you know in, in a in a good spot so that we can give our quarterback you know guys to throw to and, and playmakers who can win the game rather than forcing our quarterback to be the person who carries the offense they did all those things. And now I think that in the coming years, they'll make an adjustment to the offensive line. Now, granted, a lot of people are like, well, hey, you need that offensive line now. You got a young quarterback. You got Mitch Trubisky. They could use some time back there. But that's, again, why they want to have mobile guys, why they want to have guys who are good on the move. And I think you saw Joe Burrow. He was able to kind of handle those situations a lot better. And, and again, go back and look at that Jaguars preseason game with Kenny Pickett when there was a gap pressure, when Kendra Green didn't block a defensive tackle lined up right in the middle of the offensive line. And all that guy had to do was walk into Kenny Pickett's face. Kenny Pickett didn't blink. He got the ball out, got it to Pat Frymuth, and it was like a 15-yard game. I think that's what the Steelers hope that they have there. So I say all that to say, I think when people bring up that the Steelers' offensive line, that the Steelers, they've neglected it and it's terrible, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it doesn't look good right now. And, it, and I even say it looks bad. But you can function with a bad offensive line. Again, the last time the Steelers won the Super Bowl, they had a not good offensive line. But this year, the Bengals do have do look like they will have a good offensive line. I wouldn't sell the farm on that yet. I wouldn't I wouldn't say okay, they're definitely going to be a top ten line. It's just you know PFF giving their predictions, and we all know how PFF sometimes with their grades and their, their their outlook on players, they can be over the top crazy about certain teams and over the top crazy bad about other teams, namely the Pittsburgh Steelers, and how they keep finding ways to say that T.J. Watt isn't a great pass rusher, whatever. Um, but I, I do look at this line. I say, man, I, I respect a lot of these names. I, I think that if the Steelers are going to poke a hole in a weakness of this Bengals offensive line, it might come at Ted Karras. I think it might come up the middle, and that's where Larry Ogunjobi, um and uh, and and Cam Hayward can can kind of put put you know poke some holes, put some dents in this offensive line. But as I said before, the backup of the backup the, the backup Steelers defensive front guys, louder milk. Wormley, maybe Leal with the way that he was playing, maybe Montrevious Adams if he's able to come back healthy at some point. Those need to be; those are going to be huge points too. Because even if 
T, uh, even if TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Larry Ugonjobi, Alex Highsmith, all those guys are healthy and they're playing at a high level because against that line in that Lions game, when the Lions were trying to run the ball against that first team group, when everyone was was on the field, you know, you know minus Alex Highsmith, they were getting negative yards. They weren't moving the ball. But as soon as that group rotated out and the second group rotated in, all them yards started be, get, being given up. And it wasn't just the linebackers. It was de- it was a definitely also the defensive linemen who weren't doing a great job. So. I, I I can I continue to look at this, and I think it might not be the initial matchups. It might not be, you know, Ted Karras and Alex Kappenlaw calling like this, these new offensive linemen. It might not be these guys dominating the, the, the faces that you're familiar with, like Cam Hayward getting blown off the ball. It might be situations where it's like you know it's second and eight, uh, in, in the in the second or third quarter, and then all of a sudden Joe Mixon breaks off a 15 yard run. Because the Steelers didn't, you know, have their still their backup defensive linemen who had to rotate in, still aren't up to snuff. Now, if those guys stand up to this offensive line, I think it's a big statement. And here's where I'm at with this matchup: if the Steelers find a way to one contain this run game, two beat the Cincinnati Bengals, and, and, and I think this would be an even bigger statement than them beating the Bills last year. And here's why. The Bengals are coming off the hottest of hot streaks. They've got the quarterback, they've got the offensive line now. They've invested. They, they this is this this is a like, this is a time that they got to go get it and the Steelers, they got a brand new quarterback, a brand uh, you know, a brand new system. They're trying to figure things out and there's a lot of things in motion with the Steelers where there's not as many things in motion with the Cincinnati Bengals. This and the Cincinnati Bengals, they're at home. This is a homecoming after they've, you know, won their first AFC championship since I was like two years old. This is this is their chance to kind of like, you know, even though they didn't win the Super Bowl, this is your chance to have a banner moment. But if you shut that down, and granted, the Bills game was a remarkable upset that was ridiculous last year. But if you go in there and you make that statement win, I, I think that there's going to be more heads that turn this year than last year with the Bills. Last year with the Bills, because there was the block punt, and I think a lot of people looked at it as, oh, that was just a fluke, even though the Steelers went on to make the playoffs that year. A lot of people try to discard that game and say that didn't count. But when I look back at that game and I say, man, the Steelers did a lot of things there, I could see a lot of the similar things happening here. But they have to stop the run. If they if they if they don't stand up to this offensive line, if they don't let stand up to Joe Mixon, if they let Joe Mixon get 160 yards again, this is going to be another bad loss. But if they can keep him keep him under 100, even if it's if he gets to like 90 ish yards, that's not what killed them in the first game. What killed them in the first game was the offense never responding to any of the scores. They gave up one long pass to Jamar Chase. There was one kind of extended play where Jamar Chase got open in the back of the end zone. Those were the two touchdown passes that hurt them in that in the, in that in that first game. Tyler Boyd had a score early, but you know that was again in the stretch of the game. It was seven seven, you know, going going into like the last minute of the first half. But again, when they contained the run, that game was touchable. That was that game. If Ben Roethlisberger is able to have a better day that day, if he's not checking the ball down to Najee Harris fifty times, I mean Najee Harris literally caught fourteen passes for one hundred and two yards that game. If that's not if he's able to if Mitch Trubisky is throwing the ball downfield and not turning the ball over and giving the Steelers a shot again just to you know get them to the mid twenties, I do think this is a winnable game, but it'll only be a winnable game if that run defense shows up and makes some things happen. We also got to look at how this week's going to play out on offense. We'll do that in a minute because I do think there's definitely things to talk about with the quarterback situation because we still don't officially know, even though we know. Who the offense? Who the, the the quarterback will be for, to start this week? We'll talk about that more here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast in a minute. Here, I'm your host Chris Carter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back here in the Lockdown Steelers podcast, I'm your host Chris Carter. We're finishing up now. Talking, we talked a lot about the run defense and what happened last year in the matchups with, with the Bengals. I, I want to point this out about the quarterback situation. Yes. Mike Tomlin continues to push it back. Yes. Mike Tomlin want to address it. This is typical coach speak. This is typical. What, what, what coaches like to do. They like to do this whole thing where they're playing smoke and mirrors. And if there's a chance that they can try to hold off the other team from knowing exactly what the plan is, they're going to take every advantage to not say who their starter is so that you can't lock on to that player. Uh, look what I did there with the branding. Uh, but, uh, you, you can't study that player. You know, I co- I've covered Pat Narduzzi. It's my third year covering Pitt football. He does this every week in college. 
you know, even when you know us, that like, you know, say so he'll be like, oh, you know, we don't know who that guy is going to be starter. They're like, we even talked to the starting safety coaches for Pitt. Their starting safeties are going to be the same guys they had last year, but they wouldn't confirm it, and you know, until until the week of the game, their first game, um, because. Uh, that's just that's just how they roll, and it's how a lot of co- coaches roll. It's not just Mike Tomlin and the pit football coaches. A lot Andy Reid does does that at times. A, a lot of coaches, you know, Bill Belichick, well, he loves playing with people's heads, especially with injuries. It's like, eh, you know, he's questionable. I don't know. He might be completely out. He might be totally healthy. We don't know. Um, but um, uh, again, I, I look at these uh I, I look i look at what the Steelers are, are doing right now. We know Mitch Trubisky is going to be the starter for this game. I, I and, and I think it's fine for Mitch Trubisky to be a starter in this game. He's played the NFL action. This will give Ch- Kenny Pickett a chance to kind of see it, you know, from a you know from a step back, kind of get him a chance to assess things, study. And you know, I, I talked. Remember when I talked about? I tweeted about this after the Lions preseason game. As soon as Kenny Pickett's last drive was over, him and Mitch Trubisky sat down while Mason Rudolph was warming up to go in, and they were just going over play after play after play. And I asked Kenny about that, and Kenny was like, yeah, that's, just, that's, just, that's something that we do all the time for each other. We sit down, all three of us, we sit down, we talk over. What did we see here? What do we see there? What did work? What didn't work? I fully expect Kenny Pickett to be like that guy for Mitch Trubisky last year. If you remember this this year, if you remember the past few years, Josh Dobbs was often that guy for Ben Roethlisberger. He'd sit down, you know, the rocket scientist that he is, he would go over and he'd be like, okay, this worked, this worked, this worked, this didn't work. Let's go over this. Let's go over that. And Ben Roethlisberger said, you know, credit, he said that stuff was helpful. I, I think there's more of an even keel between these guys. Yes, Mitch Trubisky should, will be the starter. He'll be the NFL veteran. But I think there's more of a, like, you know, Ben Roethlisberger could le- legitimately look at Josh Dobbs and be like, hey, man, I'm the starter. You're the career backup. You're, you're the guy who was brought here just to kind of be the backup. Just live with that. But Mitch Trubisky gets to look at Kenny Pickett and say, you know what? Yeah, you are you could be the future of this franchise. I may be the future of this franchise, but we're going to find out. But let's work together because we both see the field. We both study. We both kind of we both got here at the same time. And Mason Rudolph's in the same position. He knows the offense. He knows how to get it work. So the three of them can kind of bounce off each other. But I think here's what's going to be great. And this is another reason I think it's also good to have a Mason Rudolph is while Kenny Pickett's learning on the sidelines, there's someone else that's learning with him. There's someone else that paces him in kind of studying those moments. And that's what I think could be really important about this uh, about this season. And maybe it'll just be the opening week. Some people think that Mitch Trubisky will bow out at some point during the season. I, I think it more might be more of just a bad luck injury situation or like oh, one day he just has a really bad game and Kenny Pickett goes in there to finish the game. And if he looks better, maybe the Steelers consider doing that. I don't know. But this isn't going to be a situation where I think Kenny Pickett just walks out into the field and starts week one. If it is, I will fully admit I was wrong on this show. Um, I, I don't do my shot bets anymore because I was told that that's not a good thing for YouTube. For those who don't know, I used to do tequila shot bets. It was water. It was water that I used to drink. Yeah, it was tequila. Uh, but I, I don't do those anymore. But I will. Uh, someone give me an idea for a bet that I have that I have to do. I, I, I wore st- I wore jet stickers when I and I said the Jets would lose a game last year on the Lockdown NFL podcast. Maybe I'll wear like Kenny Pickett stickers or something on my face. I, we'll figure out something. But if Kenny Pickett's the Week One starter, I, I will own up to it. I will eat my crow. But as far as the as far as what to expect here, Mr. Trubisky is going to start, and I think this is actually a good situation for him. The, the Bengals have a talented defense, but they're you know they're not they're not a dominant one in my opinion. I think they're they're one that they can be susceptible to some 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 moving pockets. They the Steelers have the the sk- the skill players to challenge them across the board. You know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how do they go up against Mike Hilton. Mike Hilton, of course, was very happy to, to sweep the Steelers last year, um, and some Steelers fans took it personal when he was kind of taking some shots at the team. But again. When the team lets you go after you played so well for them for what four or five years, you you gonna feel some type of way. But I think the Steelers they should they they should be ready to go at this 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 defense. I think that they have the, the skill weapons. It's gonna be up to Mitch Trubisky to figure out ways to use those skill weapons in ways that attack the weaknesses of this defense. What are those weaknesses though? We will continue to pick at or as as the week goes on because I do think that there's a lot to look at for this dude for this Bengals team. I think Jesse Bates, you know, he's a guy he's back with the team, but. That's it. I don't think it was a good thing that he waited around for so long um, to to come back to the team while he was debating franchise tag stuff. I actually think that's going to be a big detriment to what their plans are this this, this season and the continuity of their defense. And you know, there were a few guys like that. Joe Burrow came off an injury. There's going to be questions. You know, how is he looking in in in, the, in this game situation? We're going to be able to go all over that. As the week goes on, we, we get to hear from Mike Tomlin on Tuesday. We're going to be able to talk to uh, talk to Steelers players throughout the week. We're going to hear from our Locked On Bengals guys on Thursdays, and we're going to have our predictions come back with Jenna Harner. Hang in there, fans. I know a lot of you guys are asking me about run your pool. 
run your pool. I don't believe is going to be a sponsor for us this year. So I'm going to have to figure out a different pick em league. I might set up something on Yahoo or something, but hang in there. We will get you guys a pick em league because I know there's a lot of locked on Steelers fans that wanted to do that with us again. We will be bringing that back in some fashion. Just please be patient. I'm actually about to be moving. You're not going in to, a, in a week or two, so's time. You're not going to be seeing these, uh, these walls behind me. These, uh, as anyone calls them, my sauna walls, uh, because they are wood paneling, because that's all what steel, what, what Pittsburgh's used to be about in the 70s, apparently, when we redecorated uh, bedrooms. But, anyways, I'm Chris Carter, the Lockdown Steelers podcast. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show today. Sorry for a sore episode. But like I said, I'm moving. I'm trying to get a lot of pieces done, but we will have Jeff Hathorne of 93.7 The Fan on tomorrow talking about your Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to get a lot of insight into things that Tom might tell us with his Tuesday press conference and keep getting you ready for Steelers versus Bengals on Sunday. Thanks again for checking us out on Locked on the Locked on Steelers podcast. Again, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Check me out at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette where I cover pit, pit football, pit basketball, and all of pit athletics. You can also check out this show, the Locked on Steelers podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content whenever we release them. If you want to help us out, give us a five-star review with a positive comment at the, uh, on it on Apple Podcasts. Doing so both at the same time gets you a shout-out at the end of the show. Thanks again for checking us out. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers.